Welcome to the start of my Summer Strong series. Welcome to the start of my Summer Strong series. So I am kickstarting off this series by telling you all and helping you to know exactly how to feel your best for summer. So we're thinking like hot girl summer, but strong, healthy, better version. A version that doesn't have any restrictions, a version that is sustainable and enjoyable. So if you follow me on Instagram or maybe on here, then you'll know that I have over the past couple of weeks been on a bit of a feel good summer kind of shape up so I'm not in a bad shape whatsoever but I just wanted to feel like better in myself I had a, a few holidays planned I have my birthday this week and I just kind of wanted to feel my best you know and who doesn't want to especially when obviously in summer we wear less clothes um so in today's video we're gonna be going over exactly what I am doing to feel strong confident and better in myself for summer now we're not doing anything drastic but these are small little things that you too can implement into your life. Maybe if you are feeling demotivated or are unsure on what to do in order to kind of reach your goals, then I am here to help and I'm gonna help you with this very quick and simple video. And I'm gonna take you through my day and show you exactly what I am doing and what I have been doing over the last two weeks. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing this morning is making breakfast. I've already got ready, I'm hungry. It is now 10 o'clock. So one of the things that I've been doing recently is trying to have my breakfast a little bit later because this will keep me fuller throughout the day so I've been having breakfast around half nine ten o'clock and I've been feeling so much better because I was kind of getting to like half ten after having breakfast at like eight and I was hungry so now I'm kind of not eating till a bit later so basically I am feeling fuller throughout the day which is just such a bonus so if you're feeling hungry try and have breakfast a little bit later and also I have been having a different kind of breakfast so I've been trying to have a bit of a bigger breakfast that's also high and protein because this has also helped to keep me much fuller as well and I am obsessed with this breakfast at the moment but today we're doing a little bit of a twist on it because I don't actually have some of the items so I've kind of been having like turkey bacon with a bagel and jam then an egg and one egg white and the protein's like over 40 grams and it's just great because I feel so much fuller and I haven't been having bagel thins because let's be real bagel thins just don't really hit the spot do they so we've been going with normal bagels but today I finally bagels because they ran out yesterday so we're gonna go with some crumpets these are so good we're gonna put some jam on them we've got sugar-free jam i'll show you which one i use one egg one egg white and then i've also got some bacon medallions as well on this in my last video but when you are tracking things like sauces so say like ketchup mayo or jam the best thing to do is literally just pop the jar on the scale and then take out what you want and it will just go to like a minus number so i'm having 20 grams in total so i'm looking for minus 20 and then it's just super easy to track no mess and you don't have like a plate that's like hobbling off the scales because that literally happens to me all the time. This is the jam that I use. It's from Morrison's it's Blackcurrant and it's literally so good. And there we go. Meal one for 378 calories and 29 grams of protein. Like how quick and easy was that? Super delicious, high protein, high carb. They keep me nice and full. Breakfast done. 
That's a great start to my day because I've got a balance of protein, carbs, and fats. So before we go into the day, I am currently tracking my macros and my calories because this is the best way to reach your goals if you have a time frame. And personally for me, once I track my calories, I just know I'm gonna feel better because I'm gonna have the right amount of protein, carbs, and fats to fuel myself, but also to kind of make sure that I am within that small calorie deficit that I have put myself in. So at the moment, what I'm aiming for is, let me just get up. <laughs> so at the moment, what I'm aiming for is 1,735 calories, 170 grams of carb, 140 grams of protein, and 55 grams of fat. So for me, that is around a 500 calorie-ish deficit. But alongside this, I am also trying to hit like 10K steps a day. So I say 10K, I'd say like eight to 10K. Like some days I'm really active and then other days I'm just not. At the moment, the weather is so bad here in London um so most of my sets are probably going to be gotten in at the gym let's be real um but yeah I'm aiming for around 8 to 10k steps a day and of course you know the more active that you can be the better obviously to a point but you want to be as active as possible steps are a really easy way to kind of burn calories and just get your energy expenditure up without kind of feeling absolutely exhausted so that's one thing that I'm doing and then I'm also doing some cardio as well so cardio is a really useful fat loss tool I don't do it all year round I tend to do it like on the lead up to kind of summer when I want to feel a bit leaner but at the moment I'm kind of aiming for around 400 calories over the week last week didn't go so great because I hurt my back so I couldn't really do anything so I'm hoping this week's gonna be a little bit better and I can kind of just get back on track with the cardio because if I can increase my energy expenditure then I can try and keep my food up as much as possible I'm also trying my weight on happy scale so it's an app it basically records everything so once you take your weight in the morning which I don't do every morning to be honest I probably don't like three times a week um I'll just write it down in here so my starting weight which was on the 25th of May when I started so actually yeah it's about two yeah two weeks ago was 65.6 kilos and then this morning I was 64.7 but yesterday i was 64.5 yeah i'm really happy with my progress so far like i'm not doing this to lose scale weight i'm just doing it to feel better myself the scale is just an indicator and it's just another variable that we can use Okay, breakfast is in the bag. It is now half past 10. I'm gonna make another coffee and then I am gonna finish planning my food for the day. So I plan all of my food out, basically like the main things in the morning or ideally the night before because this ensures that I can stay on track and I can hit my macros accurately. Because otherwise, if you do it as you go along, it's really easy to just go over them, let's be real. So yeah, if you're really struggling to stick to your macros, try and plan them in the morning and then you can include like all your favorite snacks, which is a must when living a sustainable healthy healthy when living a sustainable happy and healthy lifestyle got my Fabletics fleecy jumper on in a brown. Then I've got Fabletics shorts on, Fabletics sports bra, and finally some night trainers. Upper body, let's go. Oh my God, it is literally freezing and it is the beginning of June. What is going on? It is 13 degrees in my car right now and I'm in shorts, like, no wonder I'm cold. But anyways, I'm just heading to the gym because I always try to get a workout in on a Monday because it kind of just sets the intentions for the week. And I have a good workout plan for today. So normally I would actually do, um, no, that is right actually. So normally I do a leg day on a Sunday and then I do upper body on a Monday. And yesterday I didn't actually do leg day because last week I hurt my back slightly and I was filming all weekend for Elevate My App. So I'm a strong challenge so this week i i'm not gonna do legs today just because it's been like quite a heavy kind of weekend with the workouts and i don't want to cause like any kind of further injury to my back so i'm gonna rest my legs today i'm gonna do upper body today and then um tomorrow i will do legs then i'm gonna have like a bit of a rest day on wednesday but i've also got like a yoga class on wednesday so that will be like an active kind of rest day and then thursday will be leg day finally um i'm training with my friend geordie at king's gym in London and then uh, Friday will be a rest day for uni Saturday will be a 
full body kind of cardio workout and Sunday will be a rest day because Sunday I'll be probably really hungover as I'm celebrating my birthday on Saturday and I cannot wait. So today's upper body session I'm aiming for around an hour. I've got it all planned out on the app that I use. I kind of love lost my love for upper body training but I feel like the moment I've actually got it back which is quite nice because I don't know I just went through a phase of I don't want to train my upper body like I don't want to get bulky and then I was like Ellie this is ridiculous and I lost like quite a bit of strength and then I got really upset about it so now I'm like no I need to train my upper body like I need to get back on track and like don't be so ridiculous you don't look bulky whatsoever because I literally don't so yeah I feel like as girls like we always have that kind of go through our minds so if you ever kind of think about that and think that you look bulky I promise you you literally don't like it takes so long to look like that but yeah no I'm really enjoying training upper body now hopefully we can have a good session Session done, feeling good. I actually managed to record it as well. So I hope that that was helpful. But now I'm actually gonna go to the supermarket because I need to get a few things for my recipes that I've planned for this week. So not only do I plan for the day, like in the morning, I also on a Monday make sure that I plan my recipes for the entire week because otherwise without kind of planning like my main meals, I will just be like two and four from the supermarket. I won't know what to cook. Things will be bland. I won't want to stay on track because it will be boring. And I just find like the best thing to do is just to already have the food in the house so that it's like super easy to kind of make for that week and stay on track so for this week i have planned to make cheddar and broccoli potato skins chicken alfredo pasta salmon tacos chicken salad and that's going to be like a creamy chicken salad and then i've also got like a really yummy breakfast which is like overnight weetabix but it's like kinder bueno flavored so I'm excited for this week. I think it's gonna be a good week of food. But anyways, let's go to the supermarket because I need to get some food in and then um, I'll show you exactly what I get. So I got back from the supermarket and my camera actually died. So I have actually just made a really delicious lunch and I will show you it in a second. But I wanted to show you what I just picked up in Morrison's and I literally spent 22 pounds and that is it. And that is because I pre-buy all of my meat at the start of every month and then I freeze it because it's so much cheaper and it's just so much easier as well and you know that you've always got like a protein source in the house so if you struggle to get a protein in just try and plan and pre-buy because it will just save you so much money okay so starting off with the carb sources i had to pick these up dark chocolate mint rice cakes and i've eaten one and they're so good we've also got some rivita thins these are the cheesy ones they are super low calories at just 29 calories for one and i'm gonna add this to like a chicken salad We've then got some carb sauces, so some mini tortillas because I've just made some tacos. Linguini, as I'm going to be making a chicken alfredo pasta. I picked up these sourdough. They're like kind of almost, well, yeah, they're flatbreads, but the calories are really good. And I thought they would make really good pizzas. So I'm going to give that a go if I'm like in a rush. I've got my favorite bagels. Love these ones. They're pre-cut and just super easy. Then I picked up my favorite turkey bacon rashers. 29 cows per slice, super high in protein, low fat, great for breakfast. We've got some low fat cheese just for like in general. Then I've just got some veggies. So onions, coriander, lettuce, lime, broccoli, celery to go in the chicken salad, some potatoes for the cheddar and broccoli potato skins, and then just my usual oat milk. So it wasn't a massive order, but it's enough to kind of see me through for the week because I've already got some stuff in the fridge. So before I went out shopping, I just made a list as to what I had and what I didn't because I'm really trying to stop like buying something more than once because it just goes off and it's a waste of money. So yeah, if you are finding that you're doing the same, try and sort of make a list. It will honestly make your life so much easier. And again, it will just save so much money. For lunch, I have made this salmon taco plate. So we've got salmon, which I cooked in the air fryer with honey, cajun 
Asian spice and salt and pepper. And we've got two tortilla wraps with like a yogurty mustard honey sauce. And then we've just got some salad and avocado and coriander. So absolutely delicious and it's super easy to make. The recipe is gonna be on my Instagram as I've just filmed it for a TikTok. So on this plate, there are 404 calories and 22 grams of protein. Obviously it's full of healthy fats, which is just gonna keep you nice and full and it's super good for you. So one of the things to do when trying to get fit and healthy for something, and not just summer, like just in general, is to make sure that you don't cut out anything from your diet. So I always like to plan in my favorite snacks and the things that I love and crave in the morning. And then I kind of know exactly how I'm gonna include them into my diet. So this morning I planned in this white chocolate Kit Kat. This is my favorite little snack at the moment. It's 106 calories for one bar. Having this to kind of look forward to every single day, just make sure that I can kind of stay on track and I know that I'm gonna have this and that I'm gonna feel good and satisfied after it. So if you find that you kind of start a diet or a routine and you can't stick to it, have a look at your diet and just make sure that, you know, you are including these kinds of foods and the foods that you love and crave. And, you know, if you don't crave sweet things, that's fine. Put in the stuff that you do like because that's gonna be the difference between you kind of sticking to it and you not sticking into it. So since starting a couple of weeks ago, I have lost, I think it's just over a kilo now. But one of the things that's helped me a lot is by looking at my portion sizes. So before I was tracking, but only really like two, three days a week. And now I'm kind of tracking seven days a week or as much as I can. And I'm really kind of looking into my portion sizes. So because I've dropped my calories now slightly to 1735, I'm having like the same foods, but just slightly smaller portions. So this is mainly from like carbs and fats. I'm just watching that bit more mostly because I dropped my carbs more than anything. So one of the things I'd really suggest is just make sure that you know you are weighing out your portions if you are tracking your macros but also just be more mindful about like your portion sizes because having like slightly less of everything in the day but still feeling really satisfied could be enough to kind of see results without even like track calories. So if you're someone who doesn't actually like tracking your calories or you find it like triggering which is absolutely fine like a lot of people do kind of suffer with that I would suggest like still don't track your calories but just kind of reduce your portion sizes slightly or maybe just swap out like one product for another so instead of having like full fat yogurt you could have zero percent fat yogurt and that would save you a lot of calories and if you're having like the same foods that would be a really good way to kind of just ensure that you are eating maybe slightly less from before especially if your goal is to lose fat so lots of you have actually been asking me what my training split is at the moment and what i want to say is whatever my split is does not mean it's the one for you most important thing when programming yourself a workout or a workout program is that it is doable for you and that you can fit it into your life because trust me you don't want to feel disheartened if you can't get the workout done or if it's too difficult at the moment i'm doing four resistance workouts a week i'm doing two upper two lower and then i'm also doing one cardio day so the cardio day is just there to get my energy expenditure up a little bit and like i was saying earlier just kind of help with that kind of overall calorie deficit and then i enjoy kind of having a bit of an equal split between upper and lower at the moment so that's the best thing for me. I find training four days a week works really well, especially just because I'm so busy. But if you can get in five workouts, then fine, do it. But it's not always like the best thing to have more workouts. Like it's actually better to have less workouts, but make them better workouts, like get the most out of them basically. So yeah, they're basically like the main things that I'm doing over the next few weeks in order to feel my best. My actual goal is like the second week of August. That's what I want to feel good for. And obviously at the moment, moment we're at the beginning of June so I have a while but I've definitely made great progress and I just feel so much better in myself I'm just doing it in two weeks so if you feel like you're stuck in a rut my top tip is do not give up at the first hurdle if you don't see results in the first week don't stress like I promise you results take time just keep on going and it's like your overall consistency over time and like your small changes that you make that will get you there and I promise you you will if you stick to it I hope that these tips helped and it gave you a bit of an insight as to what I'm doing each day. I am gonna just finish doing some work now. It's literally half past six and then I'm gonna make some dinner and just watch some TV and chill tonight. But yeah, I just wanted to show you like the little things that I'm incorporating and it's not a huge amount. It's little changes that add up and I think a lot of people kind of overlook this. So if you have any questions, leave them below. But I hope that you found this really useful. If you are joining me on my hashtag hot girl summer, let me know. I would love to have as many of you on board. We will definitely just do this together and just feel great for summer and I'm just super excited but please also just remember that your body is 
is not just for summer. You should feel good all year round. But I also completely understand, you know, when we go into summer, we are wearing less clothes. So I do completely get it. You know, we might want to feel a little bit better than we do in winter. I think it's just normal. So yeah, if you do want to feel better for summer, it's okay. If you are happy with how you are, then that's amazing. You know, it's absolutely fine to do what you want to do. And, and just remember that. So I hope you enjoyed watching, guys. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you at the same time next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.